ऑन मे ट्वेल्व टू थाउजेंड जसविंदर सिंह सिद्धू अ ब्यूटिशियन फ्रॉम मेपर ब्रिज ब्रिटिश कोलम्बिया फ्लू टू इंडिया टू री यूनाइट विद हजबेंड सुखविंदर सिंह सिद्धू वन मंथ लेटर इन जून ऑफ यर टू थाउजेंड हर डेड बॉडी वॉज फाउंड लेंग इन एन एरीगेशन कैनल वंस अथॉरिटीज फाउंड आउट अबाउट द इंडिविजुअल्स बिहाइंड द कॉन्कॉक्शन ऑफ अर मर्डर प्लान पीपल कुडेंट बिलीव इट Jaswinder Kaur Siddhu, Jassi as everyone called her, was born on August 4, 1975, to Bakhtor Singh and Malkit Kaur Siddhu, who belonged to a conservative Sikh family from Dwaba region of Punjab, India, which migrated to Canada in early 1970s and settled into Fraser Valley of southwestern British Columbia. The family operated a successful blueberry farm. and was headed by Surjit Singh Badesha who was Jassi's maternal uncle growing up confined in her family's compound in Maple Ridge Jassi's childhood was very simple she attended her school went to temple and spent rest of her day helping her family around the house the former principal of Jassi's high school in Pitt Meadows described her as a quiet friendly and diligent student Shortly after Jessy received her high school diploma she started working at a beauty parlor in Maple Ridge Every day Jessy was escorted to and from work by either her brother or one of her male cousins In December of 1994 Jessy visited Indian state of Punjab and it was there that she met the love of her life Sukhvinder Singh Sidhu also known as Mitto a rickshaw taxi driver Jessy and Sukhvinder knew that their love was forbidden as Sukhvinder was from Jessy's mother village and belonged to the same clan as her which according to the traditional Sikh culture is same as marrying a family member but Jessy and Sukhvinder didn't care as they were madly in love with each other and when Jessy left for Canada both of them kept in touch and were involved in a long distance relationship by late 1998 Jessy was now 24 years old and her family who wanted and arranged marriage for their daughter were looking for a suitable groom a groom who according to them should be of higher or same status as them their search for this groom took Jessy's family back to Punjab but they didn't know that Jessy had already given her heart to Sukhvinder and in March of 1999 Jessy told her family that she was going to visit one of her friends but instead she went to a gurdwara where she and sukhvinder got married and soon after that jessy returned to canada with her family being oblivious to the fact that her daughter was now married to sukhvinder this didn't last long as in year 2000 a relative from india called malkit kaur in canada and told her about her daughter's secret marriage furious the family tried to annul their marriage At first they tried to bribe Jessy with material possessions and when dad didn't work they resorted to violence and when even dad failed to break Jessy's resolve they tricked her into signing a document which contained criminal accusation against Sukhvinder and when Jessy learned about the reality of that document she tried to clear Sukhvinder's name and wrote a letter to Indian officials saying that she was coerced into signing those papers but indian officials told her to come to india and withdraw her complaint in person after this jessy's family locked her in her room took away her passport and all of her privileges eventually with the help of royal canadian mounted police jessy escaped from her confinement and after obtaining money from one of her friends bought a ticket and flew to punjab india where she was finally reunited with sukhvinder On the evening of Thursday, June 8, 2000, after having a dinner, Sukhvinder and Jassy were on their way back home to Narike when they were approached by a white car which was waiting for them on a bridge. Four people got out of the car and were armed with swords and sticks. Without warning, the men attacked the couple, left Sukhvinder for dead and abducted Jassy. 
Jessie was then taken to a farmhouse where they tortured her, slit her throat with a sword, and after she was dead, they took her body to an irrigation ditch 21 miles away from Konki Khosa. The following day, her body was found by a farmer who immediately notified the cops. In her post mortem report, the cause of her death was mentioned as shock and hemorrhage as a result of injury to the vital organs. Sukhvinder, who was left for dead by the assailants, survived but remained unconscious for weeks, and when he was back to his senses, his family didn't tell him about Jesse's death for three months as they believed he was not in a condition to handle such a devastating news. After an extensive investigation, police managed to arrest 11 people, one of whom was a police officer. And when police dug further, they found something strange in the killer's call record. There were more than 200 calls between the killers and Jesse's uncle, Surjit Badesha in Canada. Police now knew who were the real conspirators behind Jesse's murder. Her own kin, her mother and uncle were the ones who ordered those goons to murder Jesse and Sukhvinder and had paid them about 10,000 Canadian dollars. One of the killers told police that before they killed her, they called Jesse's uncle Surjit, to whom she begged for her life and promised to do whatever they asked of her. Sujith handed the phone to his sister, Jessie's mother, Malkit, who didn't bawl and as her daughter was still pleading for her life, ordered the man to kill her. When confronted about this revelation, Surjit and Malkit denied these allegations and blamed Sukhvinder for Jessie's murder. But the evidence against them was incontrovertible and there was no denying the fact that these were the people who had their own flesh and blood killed for their so-called honor. Extradition of Surjit Badesha and Malkit Kaur was requested by the police in India, but the process was delayed due to Canadian extradition law and RCPM also conducting their own investigation. Back in 2012, after a long and extensive investigation, Surjit and Malkit were arrested by the RCPM and it took seven more years for them to be finally extradited to India, where they were to face the trial for the crime which at that point was committed 19 years ago. But the justice for Jesse is still a long track as out of 11 people arrested for a murder, seven have been acquitted by the Indian courts, which includes Darshan Singh Badesha, Jesse's uncle and the man who was the bridge between Jesse's family in Canada and the hitman in India. With Darshan off the hook, the case against Malkit and Surjit is totally circumstantial and it will take a long time to prove anything against them. By March of 2022, both Surjit Badesha and Malkit Kaur had obtained regular bills from Indian courts and their trial is still going on. The case of Jaswinder Kaur Siddhu garnered massive media attention and culminated into several documentaries, a made-for-TV movie and a website named Justice for Jesse dedicated to obtain justice for her. In 2004, Sukhvinder was convicted of raping a woman and was sentenced to jail for four years, but the accusations against him were later proved to be false and he was acquitted. The woman who made these allegations were revealed to have connection with Jesse's family. A scholarship to commemorate her memory was started at her high school in Pitt Meadows. Remembering his former student, former Pitt Meadows principal Jim Longris said that we can't bring her back, but it would be nice for people to know who Jesse was. Thanks for watching our video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and share our videos with your friends and family as it can help us expand our reach. Stay tuned for our next video. Until then, goodbye.